All right, so you wanna spice up your Discord channels? Well, let me show you how. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create channel headers. Now, what are channel headers, you ask? Well, I made the term up for this video, but I consider them small images that introduce a channel or separate different sections of it. So if you have a rules channel and you want to make a bold title that says rules, that image would be the first message in the channel. If you have a channel with both rules and stats, for example, you can make two headers, one that says rules and one that says stats and separate the different sections accordingly. By no means are these headers necessary, but they can really add that appealing touch to a channel and make it stand out from the other servers that have a long, boring list of rules and nothing else. I prefer to make mine transparent, so I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. But of course, you can design these any way you want, but I'm going to show you my style. I like them transparent, bold, and with a vibrant gradient, along with some smaller white text, just like this one here. You're going to need an image editing software, such as Photoshop, GIMP, Paint.net, or something like that. I'm going to use Photoshop for this tutorial. I'm going to create a new document, and I'm going to set the canvas size to 1000 width by 500 height. And resolution, I'm going to keep as 72. If I make my text 115 pixels, then 72 resolution will keep it the same. If you change the resolution, then the text size will differ, even if the pixel size is the same as in my video. If that doesn't make sense, it's fine. Just keep it at 72. I don't think it really makes any difference. I'm going to set a background just so I can see the white text that I'm going to make. Because if I don't, then I'm not going to see it because it just blends in with the background. That is a checkerboard pattern in Photoshop. So I'm going to set it to a dark grey. And OK, and I'm going to uncheck artboards and make it landscape. So I'm going to create that. And here it is. I'm going to unlock this layer so I can actually edit it. So for this example, I'm going to make one for a self-assignable roles channel. You may have seen those before. It's basically where you react to a message and give yourself certain roles. They're usually optional, but they add quite a lot to the server. So I'm going to make one called selectable ranks. That's what I like to call it because you can select your own ranks. So I'm going to press T for the text tool. You want to select your text tool. And I'm going to left click and type in my selectable and then align down ranks. And so we have selectable ranks. I'm going to click the check mark here and I'm going to resize this. I'm going to have mine aligned to the left. If you want it aligned to the middle, you can do that by selecting that. Or to the right by selecting that one. I'm going to have it to the left. So I'm going to resize this and make it quite big as long as you have it taking up the majority of the space on this canvas it should show up quite well on discord otherwise it's gonna be way too small and hard to read so I'm gonna enter and I'm gonna give this a gradient so I'm gonna double click this to go into blending options and then select gradient overlay and I'm gonna reset the alignment and have the scale on 100 this is all up to you and I don't know why it's at one that's kind of annoying so I'm gonna set it to angle zero and I'm going to change the gradient. So I'll have, let's say, a nice orange. Like that. Nice light orange. And on the other side, I'm going to have a light pink. Does that work? Yeah, that kind of works. Maybe a purple. No, I think it goes a bit too far. So it's a light orangey yellow to a light pink. So I'm going to click OK twice. And... Yeah, I'm going to keep it as that. Maybe reverse. No, I'll keep it as that. I'll align it with the layer. Actually, I won't. I prefer it without that. So if you don't want gradient lines, then you're going to have to select dither. I'm not going to explain what it means because it's confusing. But if you create a gradient and you see all these different lines blending the colors together, then that's really not appealing. So by selecting dither, that should get rid of most of them. But this text is quite big and the document is quite big. So it shouldn't be that much of a problem anyway. I'm going to add a bit of a drop shadow because we have a black background. We could barely see it. So I'm going to click OK and hide the background and then go back in again. And I'm going to make a simple one like that. Not too strong, but definitely appealing. So I'm going to click OK. So we have the gradient and the drop shadow. You can have more if you want, but I'm just going to keep it at that. Yeah, I'm going to enable the background again. You won't actually need the background in the future if you're going to make it transparent. So I'm just going to rename it temporary. And I'll set that to red because we don't need that. I forgot to mention, if you want a bold title, you're going to want a bold font. So I went for Baby's New Bold. I've used that a lot before and it's probably my most favorite font ever. Looks really nice and works in a lot of areas. Bear in mind it's caps only, so you won't be able to have this in lowercase. But you can always use a different one like Helvetica New. 
you can have something like that even more bold more fun but i'm gonna keep it as a nice bold davis new because i like that i'm gonna just change the line spacing a bit right there we go i'm gonna drag that down so it's equally away from the bottom as it is from the left so there we go now if you don't want a huge gap between this image and the future messages then you're going to want to make sure this text is quite close to the bottom of the document so there's not a lot of space when you delete the background. Ideally you want to crop the canvas so it's just around the edges of everything you can see otherwise the image would appear small because you have a lot of empty space around it which you're not going to see. So that's why I made this really big. So I'm going to add a nice white text over this and give it something cool like spice up your profile with and then selectable ranks something like I have on my discord server and by profile I just mean the roles list so I'm just going to keep that as white and I'm going to use exactly the same font you can always go regular if you want something like that but I'm going to keep it as bold because the text is smaller anyway so you want it to really stand out as well as this okay so the gap between selectable and ranks I'm going to try and copy up here so it's above selectable and between the white text just so it's quite even and looks nice so that looks about right. So if you want to be really precise, I'm going to align the edge of width up to the out in selectable. There you go. No one's going to notice, but I just fancy doing it anyway. So I think that's looking pretty nice. You're going to want to make sure the drop shadow doesn't cut off because you have the image too small and the text too close to the borders. So if you have a drop shadow that's too strong, it's going to be cut off. So no one's going to see it down here because that's not part of the image. So I only have a small one and that looks to be just within the boundaries. Yep. So that looks good. So I'm going to press C so I can crop the canvas. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to crop it to the, just above this white text here. The less invisible space you have, the better. You want the image to be as big as possible. So if you have a lot of empty space, it's not going to show up in the document. It's going to take up a lot of space and the text will appear small. How this all works is basically it resizes every image so it's about the same size in chat. So if you have a lot of space above this, it's just going to crop and it's going to make the text really small. So you just want to minimize as much space as possible. So I'm going to set up right above that. And that doesn't cut off anything so i'm gonna bear in mind the drop shadow again just drag this a bit over honestly this and this doesn't make that much difference so i'm just going to keep it slant and i'm going to crop this side as well bearing in mind the drop shadow and okay and the one down here it's almost going to cut off so i just put it up a tiny bit and there we go you don't need to be a perfectionist but i like to be that so yeah if you want to go even further you can add some image in here so i'm just going to put that one there maybe change color a bit and try and apply that same gradient to it and set the blend mode to color. Yeah. So I'm basically changing the color to kind of what we have here. So I'm going to mess with the blend mode to see what works best. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with color. Maybe make that a bit lighter so I put a white color overlay on it. And low the opacity. So there we go, that's a bit lighter. So I'm just going to keep it as that. Looks kind of nice, uh, a nice brush pattern. It's definitely optional, but you can put it there if you want to spurs it up even more. Okay, so I'm pretty proud of that. You can make alterations if you want. Okay, I just remembered. You're going to want to set a drop shadow to this white text, because if you don't, and someone uses light theme, which yes, people do that still, then people with the light theme aren't actually going to be able to see the white text. It's just going to be white on the white background, so yeah, it's not really going to be easy. So I'm going to put a drop shadow on that, just another black one. So people can actually see it on the white theme because the drop shadow really puts emphasis on the white text so you can actually see what it says. So I'm going to have to crop this again so I don't cut off the drop shadow. So I'm just going to set it to about that. And I'm just going to drag the preview up. So I think I'm pretty happy with this result. So I'm going to delete this image here. If you want to make it transparent then you're going to want to delete that. So I can always add a drop shadow to this image but I'm not going to do that. I think you've seen enough. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to save the PSD so I can come back to it and edit it again if I want. And then I'm, of course, going to save the PNG. So the PNG actually keeps transparency. If you set it to JPEG or something, then people are going to see a background. So you're going to want to make sure it's JPEG, not JPEG, PNG. And I'm going to compress this as much as possible without actually losing any quality. And I'm going to test this one out. So I'm going to go into my private channel and add that image. So here it is, tutorial.png I called it. So I'm going to open that and put it in here. And I think that looks pretty nice, but I'm not really a fan of the drop shadow. I think it's a bit too strong, so you could always lower the size and reduce the opacity a bit, especially with the white text here. I think it's just a bit too much. So I use the dark theme like most people. 
Um, so I can see this white text really easily. But I'm going to go on the light theme just so you can see what it's like for light mode users. So theme light and my eyes have burned. Okay, so I'm going to view that. And as you can see, you can still see the white text. It's, it's probably not as easy to see as on the dark theme, but it's easy enough. I mean, if people can live with the light theme, they can live with this. So, yeah, that looks good. Of course, everything looks better on dark mode, so I'm going to set it back to that. Appearance theme dark. And now I can see it again. Right, I'm going to go to my welcome channel just so you can see how I've done this before. So I've created a nice welcome image here. I put the server logo in the background of the text. Just because I thought it looked quite nice and I added some brush strokes. You can do anything you want with it. Of course, I made this one bold because everyone likes bold and I really like bold. So, yeah, it really stands out and has that nice bit of blue in it. It goes with the server theme, which here is orange, but it starts as blue. So, yeah. So that was to introduce people to the channel. So this is welcome and it's welcoming people here. And the different sections are basically the different parts of the server. So I have the ranks, I have the rules, and that's it. Because I don't want to put too much in this channel. I've made that mistake before. So I've reduced it and just kept it to two sections. So the ranks, I again put the server logo here. I don't know if you can see it. But I use different colours again. So here I add a nice pink to a light orange. Kind of like we did just here. But the other way around. And for the rules, I add a pinky red. And went to a, an actual pink here. And again have the logo. And if you want to see even more, I'm going to go to choose ranks. This is... Well, this is a new one. I haven't finished this one yet. So this is my selectable ranks channel. So here you can see I've done this before. So this is for personalization ranks. I'm not going to explain everything in the server, but this is basically ranks people can get to personalize their profile. So they can set their interests, region, and stuff like that if they want to. And this is the image I was trying to find, but I didn't know what to search. So I just got that brush stroke, but I quite fan of the brush stroke anyway. I think it looks quite nice. But if I had more time, then I'll make it better. But this is just for the sake of the tutorial. And then I have notifications down here. Different colours again. Added another image here. I put a really big one here. I made the image more square. So the more square you have it, the bigger it's going to be. If you have it really wide, but short, it's going to be quite small. Without the white text, I don't like it as much. So I think the white text really makes it that much better. It's really simple things you can do to it, but anything to make it look good. And that's about it. There's one more, actually. That's a mess. Um, I actually followed a tutorial this one, I'm going to admit, because I thought it looked really nice, a nice retro 80s theme. So on this one, I add some glitch text here, and this really nice text here, I think. You can have completely different styles. I mainly go for the bold one, but I thought this looked really cool, so I went for this retro one. But as I said many times, it's all up to you. Okay, I'm going to have one thing. If you want to have a lot of space between the messages and this image here, then you're going to want to just drag this down, so the messages won't be like right crammed up to this text here. It's going to be somewhere down here. So, as you can see, I have a bit of space here. But if I were to type a message after this, it will just be right under this text here, if you know what I mean. So I'm trying to separate it with a bit of space underneath. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, you'll, you'll find out. And that's about it. So after the sudden feedback on the last video on Discord I made, I decided to make another one. I thought this tutorial would really help people out and improve their server even more. If you want to check out that video, I have a card link on the screen right now. And it'll probably be on the end screen as well. So yeah, a lot of people seem to enjoy the Discord tutorial. So I made another one here. And I don't see many people using these headers. But some servers do. But they don't always make them look that great. So I'm trying to help you out with that. If you want to make your server look even better. But as I said at the beginning of the video. This thing is optional. You don't need it. If you want to add that nice bold touch. Then this is how. So if you found this tutorial helpful. Please drop a like. And if you want any more Discord tutorials. Suggest your suggestions in the comments below. I have some more Discord tutorial ideas coming up. How to make embeds and how to put special characters in channel names. So like I've done in my server here. So you can see I've got a bit of space here between this text. This is using a special character because you can't actually add spaces into text channels. And this nice italics bold font here. So that's tutorial one of three off the list. So stay tuned for those videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.